morning, everyone, and welcome to Bayview Lutheran Church on this the second Sunday of the Christmas season. As we gather, just a couple of announcements. A reminder that Sunday school resumes today at 9.30 on Zoom, so you can uh, get your Zoom invitation from Deacon Donna. And Wednesday at 6.30, our confirmation students will be back in class on Zoom. So things are resuming after the Christmas break. And Janet has an announcement. Good morning. I just wanted to take a moment. Uh, this is Pastor Beth's last Sunday with us. So I wanted to take a moment to thank her. She's been here for almost two years. Um, she came in when our previous interim pastor had to step away, and she has stuck with us through this crazy year of COVID. She's done a ton of work to help prepare us to move forward into 2021 and, and what the new year brings us, and we are so grateful for that. So thank you, Pastor Beth, and best of luck to you as you move forward into the next step of your journey. Thank you. And as we worship, we continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, and who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives all of our sins, not through our own work, but through our Lord Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who came to the manger, let us rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Our opening song is Of the Father's Love Begun. God, 
now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give thanks, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them water by brooks of water in the straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a, shepherd to, as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain and the wine and the oil. And over the young, flock, the young of the flock and the herd, their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness. And my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our gospel reading for today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from, John, from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart. Who has, made no, who has made him known. This is the gospel of our Lord. Do any of you feel more hopeful than you did, say, even a week ago? I have to admit that I do. There was just something this year about 
turning the calendar over from December to January. I, like everybody else, was ready for 2020 to just be over. Typically with a new year, there is great hope and excitement. Out with the old and in with the new, a fresh new start, almost as if what has happened is gone forever. But after the year 2020 and all that it became, this year all those feelings are deeper and more intense than ever before. 2021 brings the promise of better things. I have heard some people say, well, it, it has to be better. It, it just has to be. But I have to say that I have a sense of real hope as we enter the new year. A sense of hope stronger than I normally have at this time of the year. Now part of that comes because of the fact that the prologue in the Gospel of John was assigned for today. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In essence, in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Jesus was from the beginning of time, and Jesus will continue to be forever. Now that's a promise for us and for all the ages. Jesus Christ is by our side every day, always and forever. As we hear this prologue just three days into 2021, it brings us real hope. Not only do we have the promise of constancy, the constancy of Jesus Christ in our lives, but in verse 5 we also find the promise that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. Even the tiniest of matches will beam brightly in the darkness. No matter how small the light, the darkness cannot overcome it. In the same way, no one, nothing, ever, ever is greater than Jesus. Light is stronger than darkness. Jesus Christ is stronger than everything. Because of these promises, we enter into a new year confident that we are not alone. Perhaps we are like the Hebrew people in the Jeremiah passage for today. God is the one who leads the faithful home, even from the farthest reaches of the earth. And as they return home, they sing and they praise God. They know that God is the one leading the way. No matter what happens, no matter where they are led, no matter what occurs along the way, God is with us. No matter what 2021 will bring our way, God is with us. I feel a lot like I'm coming out of the darkness of 2020 and into the light which Jesus holds out for us. We don't know exactly what the future holds, but we do know that God is the one who holds the future in his hand. And no matter what does happen, we are not alone. On this first Sunday, of 2021, God has a message for us all. No matter what, I am with you to the end of the ages. We have made it through 2020, folks, and we are still standing. We are still here. As we enter into the new year, it is an unspoiled page in our book of time. It is our opportunity to practice the lessons which we learned over the last 12 months. It is our chance 
for renewal. It is our promise of hope. It is our opportunity to move forward filled by God's Spirit. I hope that this new year is better than 2020 for all of us. Just remember, no matter what, God has been with us all along the way, and God will continue to be with us into the future. God's richest blessing be upon you. Amen. Our hymn of the day is, O oh God, our help in ages past. Consolation to those who weep. 
Embrace those who feel far off, excluded, or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness. Sustain the weak and the weary. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness. Especially those whose names come to mind right now. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our ascending song is Love Has Come.
sent the Holy Spirit to Mary. Proclaim joy through the angels, sent shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.